Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Luisa Prado, who asked me to review Island of Terror. It's an old British horror movie, which means it's probably going to be silly and distinguished at the same time. Island of Terror is a 1966 sci-fi horror movie from director Terence Fisher, who, if you remember, also directed Curse of Frankenstein, as well as several other horror movies for Britain's Hammer films like Dracula, The Mummy, and The Devil Rides Out. This, combined with the fact that it stars Peter Cushing, might lead you to believe this is another Hammer flick, but surprisingly, Hammer didn't make this one. In the mid-60s, Fisher directed a series of science fiction movies for other smaller studios like Earth Dies Screaming, Night of the Big Heat, Heat, and this one. So I guess we can put this alongside Horror Express on the list of Hammer movies that aren't actually Hammer movies. Oh well, I guess we could still call this an honorary Hammer movie. Until I saw the opening production logo, I could have swore that's what it was. Right away, the movie lets us know that it got a British X certificate, and if it's anything like the other movies I've done that got British X ratings, that means it's probably gonna be pretty tame. Island of Terror, brought to you by the old Sci-Fi Channel logo productions. So the movie takes place near a sleepy little village on an isolated island off the coast of Ireland, and if you were wondering just how isolated this place is, is. You know, they ought to give us better service. And a boat coming once a week is not enough. You think at least they'd get our telephones installed. Yeah, basically this is the old-timey equivalent of someone in a horror movie going, I can't believe there's no cell reception in this place. Long story short, if anything bad were to happen here, they'd be completely isolated and helpless. But come on, what are the odds of that happening? Apparently this village isn't as sleepy as I thought, since some researchers are conducting some top-secret science experiments here involving lots of dials and beakers and stuff. At least I think that's what they're doing. They could just be marinating some food for the local pub. The cell cultures are prepared. We're ready to begin. What about Rome, New York, Tokyo? Are we going ahead without hearing from them? Well, we already established there's no phones on this island, so unless you want to wait for a carrier pigeon, yeah, you're probably not going to hear from them. These guys are looking for a cure for cancer, and apparently their experiments involve radiation, so I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> Congratulations, fellas, you just invented the opening credits. After the credits, we get a scene of a guy walking alone at night, which would normally be before the credits in a movie like this. But either way, he's probably dead. Ooh, sounds like there's a Mars Volta concert going on in this cave. Hopefully they play some songs from their first album. <laughs> I knew it, it's mostly new stuff. The guy's wife tells the police he's gone missing, and by the police, I mean one guy, since he's the only cop on this island. Oh man, I don't get to carry a gun or drive a car? Being a British cop sucks. Good news, you found him. Bad news, he appears to be dead, but better give him a few whacks just to be sure. Also, what the hell happened to this guy? Did he drink some bad Guinness and shit out all his insides? Better tell the local doctor about this. I think it's Ian Bellows. His body's all like... like jelly. Jelly. You're in the UK, say his body is all like marmalade, all right? Hopefully the doc's medical expertise can figure out what the hell's going on here. It's a body. Thanks, doc. After conducting an autopsy, he figures out that his bones have been dissolved and then sucked out of his body. So it looks like we've got a bone vampire on the loose. Only one thing to do now, better go to the mainland and get Peter Cushing to help. Peter plays Dr. Brian Stanley, so it's nice to see a movie where he doesn't play a doctor whose name ends in either Frankenstein or Van Helsing. We've discovered a body without any trace of bone in it. No bone. You certain? I love how nonchalantly he says that. It's like he's just being told about boneless wings for the first time. Bust the blandness with fiery buffalo boneless wings at KFC. Get no bone. That's unbelievable. Anyway, Dr. Stanley also doesn't have a clue about what's going on. So you know what they do? They go find another doctor. So besides the opening kill, so far the movie's consisted of a doctor going to see a different doctor who's like, well, I'm stumped, let's go see another doctor. Third time's the charm, right? The next guy they go to is Dr. David West, who is supposedly the world's foremost bone expert, although I kinda doubt that since his reaction to having a horny chick at his place is to go, hmm, I suppose you'd be wanting a good sticking then, I take it? Oh, you shouldn't believe everything you read in the newspapers about me. They're a bit exaggerated. Everything about you seems a bit exaggerated. <laughs> 
You're too charming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> British foreplay. I may not get places as fast as a Maserati. Ah, come on, David. I've heard lots of stories about how fast you are. I would say that he ends up getting cock-blocked, but honestly, he doesn't seem any less bored and annoyed than he did earlier. David also doesn't know what to make of the boneless corpse and wants to go to the island to see the body himself. Lucky for them, his girlfriend Tony has a rich dad who owns a helicopter. Ah, but there's a catch. I should have known. I'm going with. All right, well, we could use more victims, so I guess you could come along. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can. It might take a couple of days, though. This means we won't have any contact with the mainland. Uh, that's all right. What are the odds something bad's going to go down? Incidentally, I also have two days until retirement. Yeah, I joke, but there is some unexpected dialogue here. What the devil did Napoleon do on that island of his to keep himself busy? He invented solitaire. I have a much better game in mind. Can three play? Did Peter Cushing just ask if he could be part of a devil's triangle? Now, a lot of old British horror movies are pretty leisurely paced, but there are parts of this movie where it really seems like they're stalling for time. <laughs> Wow, did you see that? They all got on the helicopter. All right, thankfully they didn't show their trip to the island in real time. Now time to take a look at the body. Huh, well, whatever killed this spitting image puppet clearly meant business. Here's something interesting. There are a series of minute punctures in this dermal segment. Look. That's odd. That's what's odd about a guy with no bones? They're baffled about what could have possibly dissolved the man's bones, so you know what they do? They go to the doctor who was conducting the experiments on the island earlier. Well, let's get up to Phillips' place. Sure, this movie's British, so fuck it, let's add a fourth doctor in there. And you're looking for a bone vampire, so might as well go someplace where Dracula might live. <laughs> Yeah, that's not another victim. That's a guy who had too many pints at the pub and forgot to drink any water. Well, if Resident Evil games have taught me anything, it's that old creepy mansions usually also have secret underground labs beneath them. Huh, let's see, radiation danger. Well, that seems safe, let's go right on in. Great, not only did these guys not find a cure for cancer, but they also invented bonitis too. Meanwhile, a farmer finds one of his horses without a skeleton. Maybe the bad guy from House 2 borrowed it. Yeah, a horse is great and all, but besides that one guy at the beginning, are we gonna get any more victims in this movie? Oh, so it's not a vampire, but a tentacle monster that's responsible. Hopefully it doesn't take people's skeletons out anime style. There's some peculiar goings on going on on this island. Yeah, things haven't gotten this crazy since they got indoor plumbing a week ago. And if you think things are getting too hectic, here's a scene of people looking at notes and drinking tea. Okay, again, I know the movies Terrence Fisher made for Hammer weren't exactly lightning paced, but they did have a certain gothic atmosphere to them. With this one, the buildup seems a little stale. Well, Phillips was certainly working on cancer research. He was trying to create some some form of living matter to counteract the cancer cells. Eh, I'm sure there's probably no connection with what's going on here. And if you were wondering just what that life form is... Oh, no! Apparently he was trying to cure cancer by making giant boogers. They go back to the lab where we finally get our first good look at the monsters, and they look... Uh, well, not exactly great, but they're pretty standard for the time. They're about on the level of something you'd see in an episode of Doctor Who or maybe the original Star Trek. And despite how they look, not only are they impervious to axes, but they can also kill you just by touching your ankle for a few seconds. There's a look that says, uh, I'm mildly distressed by what I'm seeing here. In addition to being deadly, these things are also apparently filled with delicious chicken noodle soup. They've divided. Wait, so that's how they reproduce? Were the noodles supposed to be its jizz? Damn, how are they gonna get away from these things? Come on. Oh. Okay, that was easy. Oh, David, I'm so fresh! Well, you're the one who insisted on awkwardly inserting yourself into this movie, so whose fault is that? Bad news, there's more of them outside. And even worse, the car seems to be stuck in horror movie cliché. Oh, good, they got away. Another ten minutes and those things would have reached him for sure. Here's your water and tranquilizer, darling. I suppose I should have one myself in case I get too emotional. Actually, you know what? Have a beer instead. Just because there's monsters on the loose doesn't mean you can't get drunk. They find out that the scientists from the beginning were trying to cure cancer by creating an organism made from silicon that attacks cancer cells. Well, I guess in one way it was a success. After running into one of these things, you probably won't give a shit if you have cancer anymore. By now, the local 
locals are starting to wonder what the hell is going on, but luckily they seem to buy the story about killer cancer monsters pretty quickly. Well, what you want us to do? I'll need ten good men besides yourselves. Okay, but most of them are gonna have gout and probably a vitamin D deficiency. Now listen everybody, we've got some killer monsters on the loose, which unfortunately means the island's annual darts tournament is cancelled until further notice. Dr. Phillips is trying to create living cells, but what he probably succeeded in creating was some form of life based on the silicon atom. Now these silicates, as we call them... Mmm, I like the term terror boogers better. We learn the monsters divide once every six hours, meaning the island will soon be overrun with them. And a plan they put forth involves trying to starve them, but come on, that's boring. Think of something else. Are there any guns on the island? Plenty. And what about dynamite? There, now you're talking. Now remember our plan, darling. You sit here and don't do anything except scream when the monsters are around. I am so glad you insisted on coming. Your character's really contributing a lot to this movie. All right, time to go booger hunting. When we're done, we can stuff and mount him right next to that Musinex fucker. It's no good. We've hit it several times. And they're bulletproof. Okay, looks like it's time for a new plan. Fire doesn't seem to work either. Maybe if they tried cutting the strings holding their tentacles up. Well, don't cut them when they're right above you. Luckily for our heroes, these things are about as quick as a snail on Xanax. Seriously, a random Canada goose is more aggressive than these things. All right, so it seems like these things are indestructible, or at least hard to hit. How are they gonna defeat them? That's it's Cole. It's one of the silicates. He's dead. It's loaded with radioactivity. Of course, these radioactive monsters' one weakness is radiation. Makes sense. I guess. The new plan is to inject some cows with radiation and have the silicates eat them, which will either kill them or create a race of giant radioactive cow monsters. To do that, they have to get a radioactive isotope from the lab. I don't know if they have any, but they do have creep show lighting in this place. Oh, and remember when I mentioned stalling for time earlier? That's it. Better put these on. Yeah, I get it, movie. They're putting radiation suits on. At least the movie fades out when they take the suits off. I was worried they were gonna show all that, too. Okay, they got the isotope and probably bone cancer now. Time to get the hell out of here. David! Oh no, you monsters! That's Peter Cushing's staking hand. Quick, David, save him! All right, I know we already established these things are hard to hurt, but could you have at least tried to cut the tentacle first? All right, I'll give this movie credit that is pretty gory by 1966 standards. This is one of the only X-rated British flicks I've seen to actually kinda earn that rating. And don't worry about Peter Cushing, he's fine. I'll give you another shot of morphine. First you do a rather sloppy bit of surgery, and now you want to turn me into a drug addict. Well, it's your choice. I don't need it. See, he's so tough he can get his hand chopped off and still refuse morphine. He probably has to be awake during open heart surgery just so we could judge the doctor's technique. All right, time to inject the cows with radiation. And if the monsters don't eat them, they can just sell them to Greg's and make sausage rolls. So is this the climax? They poison some cows and then just wait around for the monsters to eat them? Oh wait, I guess we still have this romance subplot to keep us interested. I've never been much good at being serious with a woman before now, but... Really? Because to me it seems like you're always serious. David, I love you. Yes, I suppose I'm fond of you too. Good news, the silicates ate the cows. Bad news, they ate so much they divided. I guess they were eating for two. The radiation hasn't taken effect yet, which means the movie now turns into Night of the Living Boogers. That is, if in Night of the Living Dead nobody thought to barricade the damn windows. Bones. Bones! Well, not panicking didn't work, so let's try panicking. Looks like they're doomed. Only one thing to do now. Inject yourself with enough morphine so you don't give a shit. Hold it! I think they're getting weaker. Congratulations, Doc. You managed to find a cure for the cure for cancer. Unfortunately, somebody trying to find a cure for AIDS ended up accidentally creating the blob. You know, we were lucky this is an island. That is true. Continent of Terror doesn't have the same ring to it. If it had happened anywhere else, I don't think we would have been able to destroy them. But little do they know, some scientists are conducting the same experiments in Japan, which I guess doesn't count as an island.
Japan. You know, they really should have seen this coming. If any country was gonna make tentacle monsters, it's Japan. Island of Terror is one of the lesser known movies in Terrence Fisher's filmography. And while it does have an interestingly weird concept, yeah, this isn't one of his best. The silicates are a pretty interesting idea. Trying to find a cure for cancer and instead creating bone-eating monsters is pretty unique. But the execution is a little lacking, mainly because they're so slow they don't really seem like much of a threat. Also, even though the movie is under an hour and a half, there's still some parts that feel a little padded out. Peter Cushing brings his usual dignity to his role, but most of the other characters I don't really care about. And like a lot of these types of movies, there's a shoehorned in romance subplot that does doesn't really go anywhere. It isn't terrible. Like I said, it has a pretty unique concept, and parts of it are actually pretty gruesome by 1966 standards. But overall, this is not on the same level as Terrence Fisher's best work with Hammer. I will admit though, it is pretty interesting to see Peter Cushing get his hand chopped off more than a decade before he was in a Star Wars movie. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Now my hand itches. Oh, shut up, Brian. <laughs>